Eddie Scarlett's going to pick up Alan Didak right on the fullback line. That's where Lonigan's role is so important on Chris Dawes. He has to hold up, hold together to allow Scarlett to be released. 2011 AFL Grand Final is underway. Collingwood versus Geelong at the first bounce. It's Jolly against Ottens. Jolly got the tap. Ottens fed it out to Selwood. Straight away off to Varko. Varko can go all the way. Runs to 45. Travis Varko! Oh, what a start for the Cats! And it's his opponent, Leon Davis, is the matchup, and not the start to a grand final Leon Davis would want. You see there at the top of your screen, Davis trailing off Barco. You cannot do that at the start of a grand final. Must have your arm across. Davis, not the start he wanted. And the other thing that happened, Brad Ottens did exactly as you would hope. He smashed into Darren Jolly in the first bounce. Bowled the big fella over. Good news for Collingwood. Jolly back up to his feet, didn't miss Deep it. Deep into attack. Flying third man up was Tarrant. Does the spoiling work. Maxwell. Throwing his weight around is Hawkins. Here's Selwood. Quick snap. Ball smothered. Tap. Potty Adley goes to try and hack it off the ground for a goal, but only succeeds in getting it behind. We saw Hawthorne last week put so much pressure on Leon Davis, and he's kicking out of defence, and we saw him shank that first one. They needed him set for the pies. Cloak getting back to take the intercept mark. Steading, and then sets a bit of a task. For Thomas, he was up but couldn't complete the job. And the Cats will go forward through Bartel. He spots up Johnson. He's got a bit of room here. Weighs up the options. Beautiful chip pass to Varko, who can go back from 45 metres and kick his second. That is why. Travis Varko celebrated his 100th game with a goal in the opening seconds of the grand final. Now he can double that effort. It's coming back. Cats have got two. Brad Ottens has started as he plays most finals. He's a big stage player and he's well on top of Darren Jolly. Hey, Joel, it's my turn. You need to get off. And that kick around the body, and he just looks a tiny bit uncomfortable after it. So Trent West enters the fray as a ruckman. Jolly heaves it onto the boot. Didak didn't get the bounce he was after. Kelly leaves it for Cracker. Slick. Gee, Thomas really wanted it, and he made use of it too. Finds Luke Ball. It's say beyond his range normally, yeah, but this that's year... That's sore, and he's currently limping as I keep uh, the binoculars on him. Eight straight from set shots. This will really test him. It's straight. Is it far enough? No. Right on the death. And just while that shot was happening, Alan Didak's been taken off the ground. Lee Brown's come on. He's often the matchup that goes to Matthew Scull. Here's Gold Coast, oh. Gold Coast Cam, and we see the Trent West spoil. So Lee Brown... It'll give to Davis, who's starting to come into the game to the wing, nice delivery to Wellingham, to Jolly, he's got side bottom in support, short down the line, and a solid mark taken by Cloak, too far out to score, it's about 65 from goal, and there's a brown lead, ignored, so Cloak loads up, it's a monster kick, it's coming back, he's made it easily, that is a monster! He gives you confidence if you're a Collingwood supporter. That was a massive kick. It's travelled 60 metres. He's taken four marks, had three inside 50s and kicked the goal. But they play it so well. Just inside the boundary, Dale Thomas takes the mark. Inside 50s at the moment. 12-2-7 in favour of Geelong as the ball comes to the wing. Collingwood have got the numbers here. Little give to Wellingham. There he goes inside 50 with a beautiful kick to Cloak. And he will line up for his second this time. Marks this year than anyone's taken in a home and away season. He kicked a magnificent first goal for Collingwood. This for his 68th of the season. Beautiful kick. Goal umpire did not move. Pulling, taking no chances. Heads to the boundary, but it doesn't quite get there. Pendlebury had a handball in mind initially, and he was able to see off Selwood and guide the ball over two of his head. Might end up all right. O'Brien adrift, gives them so much energy to Cracker. The crowd will light up because Collingwood will just about be in front, or will they? Yes, through Cracker.
Scotty Pendlebury, always so much time. And Harry O'Brien's actually a post to Stevie Johnson. Stevie Johnson nowhere in sight when Harry O'Brien had this footy. And big moment for Andrew Cracker to kick his first goal in an AFL grand final. Was it a goal or wasn't it? Let's go to goalpost cam. Andrew Cracker kicks. And I reckon the umpire's got that 100% right. Yeah, it looks like a good decision. So the Cats, after their blistering start, have uh, slowed down, especially in terms of scoring. Steve Johnson getting amongst it. Delicate tap Stokes. This will test the knee. Is it OK? Looks all right from here. Hey, what a great start to this grand final. It has been a fantastic contest, and we've had some great goal scored as well. Look at Stevie J, peel off the pack. He looks to be fantastic the way that he's moving, and that just gives the confidence a massive boost. Back in the middle, and it's the Cats back in front, and that's holding the ball. Free kick going the Magpies' way. Johnson, get a shot. Hands it back to Ball, and it's a 50 metre penalty, and Ball will be within range. And Stokes was the man who made the blue. Two games for the Magpies. Now ball directly in front. Only 45 metres out. This to put Magpies back in front. Stokes seeking clarification. Here's the 50. Too, far, too close to the... Uh, to the man with the ball and that one pleased the coach now let's go back to the Darren Jolly Closure situation a well Gaines. weighted kick for Bartel they're on through the middle instead of fairly haphazard delivery into the 50 didn't make life easy for Hawkins he got a call at the back from Stokes who pops up into the square Podsy Adley Terrence a hard man to move Podsy Adley did everything but take the mark step one was get the ball step two get it to Varco and step three is fine Selwood now the umpire didn't pay the mark but he's paid the free kick Free kick great for contest. the smack in the face. Well, Joel Selwood, what a star he is. Comes in in his fourth grand final in five years, puts it through Geelong back in front. Scarlett, two early disposals, critical disposals, and Brown has just kept him to one since. Here's Swan, off to Pendlebury from a standing start, kicks into the goal square. Ball still alive, Cracker, 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 Cracker! <laughs> Cracker's kick two, and it's the Magpies back in front. That's Lee Brown's effort again, just worrying Matty Scarlett out of it. Just a uh, big body. And that's what small forwards are there to do. Andrew Cracker, he's starting to influence this. What a pick up this was from Ben Johnson. Pirouette, clean hands in the one motion. Great play. To end right, he's run down, holding the ball. And that man again, who's really made his influence, felt in the last 10 minutes or so. The last bit of the first. <laughs> oh, goes Dynax way. Collingwood powering on, and Cloak, surely this one's too far out quarters. Not I'm not so, different I'm to not last so time. sure yeah. about that. If he gets an arc, an arc going... This is, this is closer in than the one he yep. kicked in the first quarter. And and he he on his, his wrong side, though. Yep. On his wrong side for a left footer. So a far tougher kick here from Travis Cloak, because often they'll go from left to right. So this would be a huge kick if you can nail this one. Well, it'll be a huge kick in more ways than one for Travis Cloak. He's working it back. Buddy style. Oh, what a goal! Travis Cloak is the man for the moment. Three goals. Three astonishing goals from Travis Cloak. Well, and the call was spot on. Uh, had, I had so much Lance Franklin about it. But he's the only left footer that consistently gets it going left to right. As Lloydie said, Every other left foot in the game gets that draw across the face of goal. That is a massive goal to Travis Cloak. Three goals to Cloak. Magpies lead by 12 points. Look at Selwood go. Just busted a hole in the pack. Maggie slipped over. Here's Dawes. Fed it out. Johnson. 
Ducked the head. Tackled by Otten. has got the free kick. A lucky one. He ducked into the tackle. And Ben Johnson will go back and has a chance to put Collingwood three goals up. Spoke about Collingwood's ability in 15 minutes in a game to absolutely put scoreboard pressure on, to run away from the stoppage as well. That Brown was out for absolutely. the handball. Collingwood really on fire at the moment. Ben Johnson. It's an 18-point margin. It's forward half. Jolly grabbed the footy. Bartel can't break a hole in the pack. Snared by Ball. Ineffective kick. Johnson underneath it. Pendlebury. Now Bartel. Got it out somehow to Chapman who threw it on the boot. Inside 50 it goes for the Cats. Stokes pounces and kicks the goal. Boy, they needed that one. Exactly what Geelong needed, keeping the ball, banging it back forward as Chapman did there, and that's where a crummer should be, Matty Stokes, and you get your awards. To David Wojcinski, played in two grand finals, both of them successful. The only one of this Geelong side who just played in 07 and 09. Up to half forward, off the pack, Selwood took it from Podsy Adley, deep Johnson, Give him a metre, and usually he'll take a mile, or else he'll kick something like that. Now, this is a casualty for the Cats. It's Josh Hunt, I think, who's uh, down, and uh, he looks in a really bad way. Podsy Adley, I think, is it? does. Well, we can just see the pain, writhing in pain, still on the ground. And we'll bring Doc the Gary Zimmerman in a sec. He's in a lot of pain, just landed awkwardly, Doc. But you can see him land on his arm and he's dislocated his shoulder. They're obviously having trouble putting it back on the field and they're taking him off on the stretcher and they'll have to put it back on the boundary line. I'm surprised they didn't call for the stretcher quicker because it meant Geelong were one man down. Yeah, I think Absolutely. they were trying to do it at the time. But Zimmer, what's the story? If they get it back in a dislocated shoulder, can he continue to play out the game? He, he should continue to play out the game if they can give him a bit of pain relief and get him back out there. Well, he's going to be off for a while because he's being stretched off. So he has to stay off for the maximum 20 minutes. We talk Clyde down the other end. For, for Geelong's structure, he has to come back. Uh, if he can't physically, that is a huge factor in this match because even though he hasn't done a lot... Uh, play hasn't been stopped yet. Haven't called for the stretcher. Collingwood have possession. O'Brien at half-back. Cats are rattled. O'Brien goes for a run. Can they make them pay? O'Brien long ball inside 50. Oh. Oh. oh, what a magnificent mark from the side. Took the mark of the year this year. In, an enormous amount of pain, but this was very similar to the mark that he took without the ride on someone's back across the face of the pack. Andy yeah. Cracker, one of the great stories of the Often year. Often a tough kick, quarters when you uh, have to stop and wait for 10 minutes. He, he probably played this kick and this set shot through his head countless times, so it would be a great result for him and his maturity if he can kick this one. 34 goals now for the season. He's kicked two straight this afternoon. It's coming back. It's good enough. Three to Cracker. With Andrew Cracker's story, spent 16 months in jail, came back uh, last year. He was the best player in the Western Australian League. By that far, it was a joke. Won the grand final, kicked four goals in the grand final, was a Sandover medalist. And how fitting that on the biggest stage of all, He's got three already before half time. It comes off. The big news, Podsy Adley subbed out of the game with a dislocated shoulder. Duncan is on. Long way to go in the match. Here's Tarrant, had a wonderful afternoon so far. Did the job on Podsy Adley before he went off. Tuvi is tackled. Picked up by Duncan. Oh, he got a loose man at half forward. Here's Steve Johnson. Can load up from 50 metres out. And Steve Johnson does the business. find other avenues great tackle there from Travis Barco and a big moment for Mitch Duncan who's been off the pace a little bit in his first two finals he'd be pleased to get on in the second quarter to get a good run and a good crack at this game of football even if it's at Podsy Adley's well, expense it doesn't turn out that way 
Ling up to the wing. Hawkins had to try and break even there. He couldn't. Tarrant was terrific. Tuvi to Johnson. And now Thomas's left foot. Cloak is looming again. It won't quite get there. Mackey was like the jockey there. Cloak uses the right leg to get this one to about 40. Wellingham almost. Side bottom. Squeezes it through. They've got the answers at the moment, the Pies. And Steele side bottom has put through his first goal of the afternoon. Taylor's down hurt too for the Cats, Harry Taylor. Still side bottom, probably had his best half of football. He's up to 11 disposals. Today, uh, but all he's doing is competing. That's what they got into the club to do. So far, so good for Jolly. He's had six hit-outs for the quarter, three to advantage. Christensen to half forward. Over Hawkins, Ottens, looked a bit top-heavy there, the Cats. The small man on the scene, Stokes. Hawkins, pretty good in these conditions normally. Johnson squeezing it, just getting it forward. Barker, Christian's got a man in the goal square. He saw him, and that man is Joel Selwood. That is a vital goal for the Cats. We've all been sensing up here that they are under pressure. And I reckon Bartel's last five minutes, Joel Salwood and James Kelly, all their strong hard nuts have just bought in. And he's not only won at the stoppage, Salwood, but pushed hard forward. And their senior players have stepped up in this and last... We've all been sensing up here that they are under pressure. And I reckon Bartel's last five minutes, Joel Salwood and James Kelly, all their strong hard nuts have just bought in. And he's not only won at the stoppage, Salwood, but pushed hard forward. And their senior players have stepped no up idea. in this last So he's just called a ball up. Okay. He went to the boundary umpire, but didn't get the clearest indication. So the Cats got it deep in their forward line. Now, Jolly, did that go out on the full? It did. He tapped it over on the full. And this is a huge moment because... Oh, Jimmy Bartell. <laughs> the, 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 the pod loves to kick him. Run out your right, snap it around and get the curve going. There's big moments in grand finals, and the ball was in the hands of the right man, Jimmy Bartell. It's back to a three-point ball game, and that's why this team has been so great, because they have great leaders. They have men that step up. When they've been tackled in fierce fashion by Collingwood at the start of this quarter, and it's starting to show a little bit. Hunt Chapman, he's one who needs to lift for the Cats. Got close attention. All the up I paid the advantage. Duncan wasn't so sure. Mackey quickly gets his wits about him. It's deep. It's high. It's full forward. It's short. It's Hawkins. And it's Geelong in front. I think Travis Cloak, the most dangerous player on the ground, but the responsibility on the, the young shoulders of Tom Hawkins. Chris Scott loves it. <laughs> No Podsy Adley. Hawkins has been great. Podsy Adley off. So you think maybe another 10 minutes. Let it go to about the five uh, minutes to go in this quarter. Christensen just couldn't keep his footing. Shaw did enough. Johnson sets it up. They come. Dawes at the back. Did he get enough of it? Not quite. Thomas from one way. Wellingham the other. Knew exactly where to go. And his kick was... He thinks it's a goal. It is! Geelong. Geelong players straight away. They are arguing vehemently at the moment. Now the umpire is going to go back. No, it's goal. It's been cleared as a goal. Well, behind the goal, it appeared that it was a behind. I was judging from the reaction behind the goal. But let's have a look. This will give us the best view. Oh, oh no. Post. It's hit the post. Oh, we've seen it again. Can you believe it? Umpire's right there. And Scarlett just points straight away and says, come on, that's hit the middle part of the post. Jeez. You've got to be able to get that right. And look at Chris Scott. He's seen the replay. Big moment in this game. He's just shaking his head saying, come on. In the modern era, with the replays we've got, no mistake about that. That has hit the woodwork. The fans behind know. Everyone else on the ground knows. Did Bad the, mistake. Did the umpires confirm? Everybody getting into the spirit. Pies swarming around, Jolly gets it down. Side bottom, it's up. Thomas allowed it to wait, not paid. Had to react quickly. 
Oh, an Shit. unbelievable kick. Just for a moment, we all thought that oh, might have been a goal. Well, the whistle's away at the moment. Quick kick by Corey once again to half forward. Maxwell paddling Johnson into the picture. Picked up by Mackey, fires out the handball. Here's Wojcinski, off to Chapman. Kicks long towards the goal square and the mark's taken by Hawkins. Playing in front. The His work Victoria. rate in this game has just been enormous. He's been up at half back contesting. His power run back all the way inside 50. And look at that mongrel floating kick inside 50. Hawkins in front. He has been sensational. For his second. And this to put the Cats back in front. Are just How so good, good is it? it's fantastic. The thing I get the feeling though, just on the outside, when you've got the run of side bottom, you've got the run of Wellingham on the outside, they look really dangerous still, Collingwood. Ball, oh, great stuff from Ball, didn't panic, kept his head, spotted up Brown, who should go That's back what and the have game a shot. comes down to who takes their chances, who doesn't, one that should be kicked. Eight lead changes in the match so far. Brown, wonderful kick, Collingwood in front. Not really running up and down the line, so could be some time before Alex Vasolo gets a run. Christensen kicks inside 50. Taken by Reed to O'Brien, knocked off the kick. Corey just took the hit. Handballs forward. Pendlebury, great tackle by Kelly. Stokes keeps the ball alive into the pocket. Bartell underneath it. Bartell stood his ground courageously. And he is well within range. This is a kick. He's just banged and crashed in. What a huge kick. Kicked a goal in the second quarter. This to put Geelong back in front. Just better than any other team in the competition. It's one-on-one -on -one in there at the moment in the 50 if Collingwood do get it in. Otten's tap went straight to Thomas, little toe poke to the 50. Sliding in courageously was Cracker, but he gave it straight up to Selwood, who kicks to a one-on-one -on -one in the middle of the ground. This is a big ball. Stokes got a free kick. Advantage paid. Duncan runs to 50. Duncan for Geelong. Kicks the goal. Wow, Mitch Duncan, the great thing about uh, any game of footy, you just have to stay in it and get your moment. He struggled with the tempo of the game, that was his moment, and a big game on earlier as a substitute than he would have ever thought in this grand final. He struggled with the tempo, the big moment comes, you're running into 50, hit it beautifully. Look at Stevie J on the goal line, massive goal for Geelong. The boy from East Perth kicks the goals. The heavens open here at the MCG. Luke Ball, it's good weather for him. Oh. The Pies know they have to come again, and they do. You knew they would. Sidebottom kicks the goal. The exhilarating stuff at the MCG. How good was that from still Sidebottom? Oh. He has uh, just been enormous today, Lloydie. Oh. Has struggled in the final series, as you pointed out. Look at this pickup. Under pressure, the rain steaming down, got the handball off. Look at this, spin out of trouble and pick it up and score in the one motion. Unbelievable goal. Oh, we are being treated to an absolute spectacle from these two sides. Let's get down to Andy Marr. Oh, this is one of the greatest games we've ever seen. Cloak, but it's all Chapman. Changed his mind, it was a good decision. Got it to Hunt, he rushed his kick. It's one on two. Christensen, the smallest man there, but jumped like a giant, took the mark, and now they're on. Bartell needs to get it to sit for him. The bounce was perfect. They float again. Duncan into the 50. The big man, Ottens, one hand, couldn't drag it down. They go after it. He gets up again, and then Hawkins does it again. Tommy Hawkins on the big stage kicks his third. Christensen, what a moment up against two opponents, keeps his feet, 
is able to get the board inboard to Jimmy Bartel. And well done, Brad Ottens and Tom Out on the ground in this last quarter. Maxwell was in there saying it about Mick. There's the kick into Hawkins' direction. He's playing out of his skin. Tom Hawkins. Selwood. Great time. will. Corey had his hand held, just got the handball in time. Chapman out to the wing. Go fetches the call. And out goes Selwood first. Thomas arrives not quite in time. Selwood, the setup is complete then. Hawkins again! Oh, this is amazing! Who is this man? Where has he come from? Uh, he has just played out of his skin. Right so he'll get it at half forward. It's a long by nine. First goal. So crucial. Hawkins again. Oh, just threw Reed away like a ragdoll. And Mick Moldhouse often doesn't. He can stick to his structures. And he, he plays on. To Johnson. He handballs to Johnson, who kicks the goal. His mark know? again. And you see the handball to Stevie Johnson. He didn't want the kick. Johnson eats those for breakfast. But... Uh, how hasn't this move been made? Tarrant's got to go on to Tom Hawkins. Six fans are looking for their hero now. Throw in. Can they find someone deep? Maxwell, Harry Kick Kelly. Danger certainly not passed there for Geelong. Christensen showed unbelievable brashness for a kid. Oh. Kicks it to the wing. He's doing it again. Gee, Hawkins takes the mark. 15 Marco, minutes remaining minute. in this season. Maxwell improvises the Ruckman. Scarlet's kick. Varco went. He had to and he did. Chapman, Mackey, the collaboration of this defence that's been so steely over the years. Duncan's kick to Johnson. O'Brien wouldn't be beaten. Varco very casual, but that's his way. Christensen has a quick glance into the 50. There's nothing there for him. Johnson spots Duncan, who kept on coming. O'Brien adjusts. Duncan steadfast. Varco casually kicks a left foot goal to remember. He'll never forget it. Coast to coast, Travis Barco. Talk about work right here. Mark taken by Enright, who doesn't want to go. He'll go back and have the kick. And that is exactly what Collingwood don't want. They set up so much of their structure this week to make sure that Enright, that Harry Taylor didn't take uncontested marks, and they are. They're out, and they can see the plan ahead. Kelly's got it at half forward, cutting the 45 to Bartel. And he's on the cusp here. Geelong uh, Collingwood players on their heels could not run in that last couple of contests. And almost 200,000 eyeballs here at the ground watching Jimmy Bartel and a kick which has got there! <laughs> Is that the backbreaker? Mr. Selwood Geelong. What an unbelievable five-year career he's had so far. Tarrant in front. And it's just hard to see where Collingwood are going to get this forward momentum from. Das as the Cats fans start their version of the Collingwood chant. Corey talks one to half forward and we'll have a throw in. 99,537. The Cats begin celebrations. A little bit premature, maybe. Quarters we'll have a throw in. They can't be doing that, Collingwood. I know you can't go away from how you've played all year, and it's hard to, but uh, they're not going to kick goals out on the boundary like that. It's time. He sure took a risk last week, which got them back in in the third quarter against Hawthorne. They have to go for it. Had 104 tackles, the Cats, though. They're hungry for more goals. Quick kick, Selwood to Steve Johnson. Wouldn't this be sweet for Steve Johnson after the week he's had? He's kicked. Well, seven days ago, he must have thought he was no chance to be here. But this is where he is on the main stage, kicking the match winning goal. How sweet it is. Well, that uh, 
almost <coughs> defies logic that does excuse me we just can't believe what we're seeing here it's pretty Jones. tough to come up each week as you said Cameron Ling Collingwood free kick Harry O'Brien deep in defence oh short one Johnson slips over Varco to the captain this would be sweet a sweet goal to Cameron Ling Icing on the cat's cake. There's Ling's reaction. There's the coach's reaction. He knows they're home. Johnson out wide it's to Shaw. Uh, the clock has ticked over the 30-minute mark now. Shaw drives it as long as he possibly can. There it is! Beyond a shadow of a doubt, the Cats proved themselves as one of the greatest teams of the modern era. Premierships 07, 09 and now 2011. Three and five years. A triple treat for a sensational football side.